Years back, I showed you a very cool pressure and shock sensing alarm circuit that you can make using inexpensive components. Since that time, I have made a couple of modifications to increase the usefulness of the circuit, so let me show you. Now, the original circuit operated using a 9 volt battery. That has remained the same. And the way it worked, you had this disc at the end, which is a piezo wafer. Inside this piezo wafer, which is commonly found in electronic devices, that produce varying tones or beeping sounds, there are little tiny quartz crystals. When those quartz crystals are disturbed, compressed, or vibrated, a very small voltage is generated, and that's what triggers the circuit inside this box. This type of a circuit can be placed under a mat, so if somebody walks over a mat, this is extremely thin, they're not even going to feel it, but it's going to cause the alarm to come on. If you want to increase the chances of them hitting this, you can put three or four of these in parallel by connecting the outer ring that you see right here to the outer ring of the other three or four piezo wafers, and then taking the larger area in the center with the other wire soldered and connecting that to the other three or four. So if any of those are disturbed, the circuit will trigger. You can also take this, flip it over, and on the opposite side, you can use a very hard curing epoxy bonded to the inside of a door panel, maybe to the inside of a shed door that's made out of metal, or even a pane of glass. If there's enough shock to the door or the pane of glass, it's going to cause the circuit to trigger. When the original circuit was triggered, a very loud piezo alarm sounded. Now what I wanted to do was not only have just a very loud alarm, but I wanted to be able to position the circuit further away and have notification done wirelessly. So now I have, when this triggers, it's going to send a signal up to 33 meters or 100 feet away to this receiving unit. The receiver draws extremely low current. You could get by just using batteries to power it, but I wanted to have this plugged in and have it running 24 hours a day and never have to worry about batteries. Right over here, there's a very tiny hole and that's where the piezo alarm is mounted. When the circuit's triggered here, you're going to hear it over here. Before I show you how to make one of these, let me give you a couple of demonstrations first. For the first demonstration, I just want to show you the level of sensitivity. The receiver's plugged in on the opposite side of the room and the circuit is powered up. Very gently grab this. And of course, if you press on it lightly, it triggers. Okay, let's go on to the next demonstration. You can see the control box is mounted underneath the mailbox onto the wooden post. And inside the mailbox on the bottom right side is the piezo wafer, and it's taped to the inside of the mailbox. If you were going to do this, you would normally bond it to the inside of the mailbox using two-part epoxy. If you look through the window, you can see the mailbox out there. It might be hard to see. There's a little bit of a glare. It's about 50 feet away from me standing in the kitchen. Off to my right, I have the receiving unit for the system. I'm now going to have Rose go outside and open up the mailbox. Rose, okay. open up the mailbox for me, please. Like I normally do? Yeah, the way you would normally do it. Okay. And while she's doing that, I'm going to monitor the system to see if we get the beep when she opens up the mailbox. <laughs> she is nuts, oh my God. Are you serious? That's how you open the mailbox? Yeah. <laughs> You're too funny. You can take this and place it under a mat or under carpeting and it will let you know if somebody's walking in a certain area. The wire could be made much longer, just take 20 gauge wire, two conductor, make it three or four feet long, and you could push it way off to the side where no one sees it. And right here, you can see how well that works. Now I'm going to be showing you two different schematics. The first one is going to be for the transmitting portion, which is right over here. And just below this one is for the receiver. The main components that you're going to need for the transmitting portion is this one right over here, which is a BS-170. That's this TO-92 package that you see right here. 
and that's an N-channel small signal MOSFET. Right over here is the piezo wafer. Over here is the IC1, which is a 555 timer. And you can see the pin out, there's a notch at the top. Pin one is over here, pin four is at the bottom, pin five, and it wraps all the way around to pin eight. This component at the top is a read relay, and you don't have to use the exact same one, but that component is right over here on the schematic. And of course, the remote control that you're going to be tapping into. If you're having trouble seeing the schematic clearly, don't worry about it. I placed links in the video description area to the transmitter and receiver schematics. You'll be able to view everything up close and print them if desired. For the pinout on the BS170, it's drain on the left, source on the right, gate in the middle, and you can see the flat surface on top. When you look at the relay, it may be hard to see, but there's a leg sticking down right here, another one there, one more here, and another one there. The schematic shows a normally open contact between the outer pins. So that's the pins over here. And the two pins in the center, that's your coil. The entire circuit is going to use a 9 volt alkaline battery. And when on standby, the current is extremely low. It only draws around 6 milliamps. I'm going to go over the schematic very quickly. The left side, you have your piezo wafer. When this is subjected to shock, vibration, you're going to have an AC voltage that's generated. It's going to be a very low voltage, but it's enough to make the circuit operate. The voltage is generated, and you can see there's a diode right over here. It's a 1N4148. The purpose of that is to ensure that we only get a positive pulse making it through. You don't want to have negative pulse go over to the gate of this MOSFET because it will not trigger. We need a positive pulse. Between this rail and the bottom, you can see there's a 10 meg resistor. The purpose of this resistor, it's going to help you get the sensitivity just right for this piezo wafer. So if this value is too low, what's going to happen, whatever voltage that you have generated over here that makes it through the diode, if it's too low, you're going to lose all that voltage. It's going to go to the negative rail. But if you have a high value resistor, in this case a 10 mega ohm, you're going to have voltage build on this side of the diode and you're not going to lose all that voltage across the rail. So if you notice that this is not triggering properly, you're going to want to go higher on this value. So you have the voltage that's generated, which is a positive pulse, and it goes over to the gate of this MOSFET. That positive pulse is going to turn the MOSFET on, power is going to flow from the drain to the source and to battery negative. Over here you can see the ground sign, that just means everywhere on the circuit that you see it, it's all going to be connected to battery negative. Over here at the top you have your battery connection, that's your positive and your negative. There's an on off switch and it goes into pins 4 and 8 on the integrated circuit. And there's another high value resistor right here. It's showing one meg. Now I went a lot higher than that. I experimented between 10 and 20. And you're going to have the same effect. It's going to help with the sensitivity. If you increase the value of this resistor, you're going to have more of a difference in voltage on this side compared to this side. And if you make this a much lower value, there's going to be less of a voltage difference between the right side and the left side of that resistor. Getting this value right is very important because if it's not right, the integrated circuit is not going to generate an output on pin 3. When pin 3 has an output that's generated, it's going to go through this 1N4001. After this diode, you can see there's a quarter watt 75 ohm resistor and it connects to this Zener or Zener diode, which is a 5.6 and it's a 1 watt diode. You can get by on a 500 milliwatt you want to make sure that the voltage is not going to be too high going into this 5 volt read relay. Every time a detection takes place at this piezo wafer, it's going to have the output triggered and it's going to trigger this relay. When the relay is triggered, you're going to have the normally open contacts for that relay connected across the switch on the remote control for the correct A, B, C, or D that you're using. It's going to act like you're pushing the button, but the circuit is doing it for you through the relay. 
For the receiver portion, you're going to be using a 100 milliamp 5 volt regulated power supply. The board, you can see pin 2, that's your positive 5 volt, and that goes to positive of the power supply. The first pin is your negative, negative of the power supply, and you can see this jumps over that wire and it goes to ground. The purpose of the ground is just to let you know, as I said earlier, that the connection here is negative and the connection at the bottom is also going to the negative. Now for the switch that I chose to use on the remote control, I had to use the first connection you see right here. You may have to use the second one, third, or the fourth. So if you're using A, B, C, or D, make sure you're using the right one. You can test it before connecting this up. You're going to have your digital multimeter connected to the negative side of the power supply and you're going to take the positive or the red probe from the digital meter and you're going to touch it to each one of these outputs while you're pushing the button on the remote control. When you find the one that supplies 5 volts, you know you got the correct pin and that's the one that you're going to connect through a quarter watt 10K resistor into the base of an NPN transistor. You can use many different types, 2N4401, 2N3904, BC547, or a 2N2222A. Emitter goes to battery negative. You're going to take the positive from the piezo alarm. Keep in mind the alarm has a built-in oscillator, just like this one right over here. If it does not have an oscillator built into it, nothing is going to be heard when the circuit triggers. Make sure it has a built-in oscillator. If you take a closer look, you can see one of the legs are longer the longer one is the positive. The negative from the piezo alarm connects to the collector of the NPN transistor. Other transmitter and receiver modules can be used besides this 315 megahertz module. I just happen to have a bunch of these laying around. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.